Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. For the next few moments, I'm going to delve into a very unique subject. There's a verse in the book of Revelation chapter 13 where an image of the beast is going to be created. And the Bible indicates that when this image of the beast is created, it will speak and live and be so fascinating to the point that people will be forced to worship it. I must confess to you that in my 41 years of full-time ministry, I've been a little bit puzzled about this image of the beast. But I'm going to tell you tonight that there may be a link to artificial intelligence that is being developed right now and in the future to this image of the beast. This might be the first time in the history of my ministry when I can look at people and say, this could be the explanation of what is about to happen. So I want you to uh, follow with me and track with me, those of you that may be watching for the next 20 minutes or so. I want to just begin by saying this to you. In my opinion, based on what I know in the scripture, we are not in the tribulation nor any part of it as yet. The second thing I want to say is this. We're in, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 8, the seasons of the birthing pains. The King James says sorrows, but it's the Greek word for birthing pains. Number three, Daniel in Daniel chapter 12, and verse 4, wrote a verse and said this, that at the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. That is spiritual knowledge, that's prophetic knowledge, that is secular knowledge, that is all forms of knowledge. In Revelation chapter 13, however, is probably the most fascinating verse in the Bible. Based on Daniel chapter 9, based on Matthew chapter 24, and based on Revelation chapter 1 and chapter 4, let me share with you where I think this is, what this is about. The book of Revelation called the Apocalypse deals with a seven-year time frame, 1,260 days plus 1,260 days, 42 months and then 42 months with a weird gap in the middle. Daniel 9.27 says that a man will come in the future that will confirm a covenant for one week. That word in Hebrew is not a week of seven days, it's a week of seven years. And in the midst of the seven, he will cause the sacrifice to cease, invade Jerusalem, and set up an image of himself. And that's also found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 13. So the book of Revelation deals with the seven-year tribulation. Now the midpoint of the tribulation is when a man called the Antichrist invades northern Africa. He takes over, according to the book of Daniel, Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia. And then he goes into Jerusalem and divides the city completely down the middle. And uh, once again, takes the, of course, the Bible says in Zechariah, the Jewish people will be taken into captivity. The women will be ravished. But half the city goes into complete captivity, and that would be the Jewish section. And the Arab East Jerusalem, which is the Arab uh, section, uh, mostly Muslim, uh, they, will, they will rejoice as the Antichrist comes into the city of Jerusalem at that particular time, then the Antichrist rules for a final 42 months. Now, what you read about in the book of Revelation chapter 13 is the symbolism of what is called two beasts. The first beast of Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, is the Antichrist. But there is someone who adjoins him right about this time in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Through, uh, 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 in fact, let me give you the verses. Chapter 13, verses about uh, 12 through, through 15. And this man is called a lamb with two horns. Now this lamb, of course, and you know in the Bible represents Jesus, except in this place. The two horns represent two religions that will come under him. So this lamb with two horns is, is a symbol of a man, and he is a man who is identified in the book of Revelation as the false prophet. The false prophet will team up with the Antichrist. They will move the headquarters to the city of Jerusalem. That's in Daniel chapter 11. That is also there in Revelation chapter 13. Once, once the headquarters is moved to the city of Jerusalem, something very strange happens. So I'm going to read this to you from the New King James translation. Revelation 13 says this, and he exercises, this is the false prophet, all the authority of the first beats, that refers to the Antichrist, in his presence and causes the earth and those that dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, even so that he makes fire to come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Somebody say great signs. 
It's a false sign, but it's, it's a great sign to the world. He deceives them that dwell on the earth by whose signs he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling them who dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now, in the book of Revelation, it was written in the Greek language, and this word image is a very common word that uh, traditional Orthodox churches would know. It's called icon. So if I was translating this just to plain English, he will make an icon of the beast and make the icon speak and live. Now, that's the Greek word that is used in the English translation for the word image. Now, this is important because I want to read again this verse. Now, what I'm going to do now is read the same, or should I say a section of this verse from the 1611 translation of the, uh, uh, or the King James translation of the English Bible. Now, notice where I'm going to put the emphasis. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, who is the person that is commanding them to make an image? Answer, the false prophet. Now, we know that by the context of the text. The false prophet is initiating a icon to be created of an image of the beast. But what is interesting is Somehow the false prophet has power to give life and make the image speak and live. This is a supernatural, demonic miracle. It's not a miracle from the Lord. And so when you look at this, what fascinated me, and I, never, I, I don't know why I never paid attention to this before, was this phrase. Listen to the phrase again. And he causes uh, um, uh, them, he, he demanded them, he, let, me, let me go back. He will deceive the world and call fire down from heaven and demand them to make the image of the beast. Revelation 13, 14. To them that dwell on the earth, that they, somebody shout they, they. That they should make an image of the beast. I had always read that, that he makes the image of the beast. Bill, you've heard me preach on this before. So my assumption was the false prophet makes the image. He does not. Now this is where it got real interesting to me about a month ago. He tells them who dwell on the earth, to make an image of the beast. And he had the power to give life. Are y'all tracking with me? You better stay with me on this one. To the image of the, of the beast. Now, I want to take you now to a very strange passage. I remember when Bill was working for me, it's when we saw this passage, and I had a Greek interlinear translation of the Bible. And I'm going to the book of Revelation. It takes the Greek word, translates it to English. And we came across a word, and I said, whoa, Bill, you'll remember this. Bill, look at this. And we start checking this out because one word is translated different in that Greek in a linear translation than it's translated in any other translation. And it shocked me. So we began to do some research on why does this translation change a major word? This is an Egyptian text reproduced in Alexander that, in, that, that used... Um, the Latin version of the Vulgate translation of the Bible. Okay, now I know that's a lot of big words. This text that I'm going to read is used by the Greek Orthodox and Eastern Orthodox churches, uh, but somewhere in the third to fifth century. And what that means is that this is a very early text of the book of Revelation. That's what's significant. That's, what I'm, that's the point I want to make. Ready for this? Here is that translation from the fourth and fifth century. It was given unto her to give spirit to the image of the wild beast, that the image of the wild beast should both speak and cause to be killed all those who would not in any way worship the image of the beast. I will repeat the phrase again. And she gave power to the image of the beast. The only word that was changed in the Vulgate translation is he to she. I did research in everything I could find and could never find the reason that was done till somebody told me that there was a museum in the United States, you remember this, Bill, that had one of the oldest manuscripts of the Bible, and in that Bible, it is translated as she. Now, you say, well, there's no she in the text. Exactly right. That's why they made it he, because there is no she in the text. There is a lamb with two horns, 
who does all of these false miracles, and it's a he till you get to this verse, and somebody's made it a she. Now, is that a mistranslation? Well, let's go a little deeper. Are y'all still here? Yes. She, if this old text is correct, she could be a woman of some type connecting the entire world together during these events. Notice in the book of Daniel the following verses. These are all verses that can relate to the Antichrist. Daniel eleven thirty eight. 38. But in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold, silver, precious stones, and pleasant things. Daniel eleven thirty seven. 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers or the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Daniel eleven thirty eight. 38. But in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not. Look at Daniel eleven thirty nine. 39. Thus shall he do in, a most, in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he will acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. You don't see it as much in America but you're beginning to see it in Europe. Old Baal worship is coming back. Satanic worship is on the rise. The fastest growing religious group in the United States are witchcraft, occult. No, seriously, New Age occult and witchcraft are, you combine them together, they are growing so fast, especially with the younger generation, that it's almost mind boggling. Now hear me well. In the time of the early church, in the book of Acts, what did the apostles have to deal with more than anything else? I'll give you the answer. Idolatry. When Gentiles were converted, trying to pull them away from their idol worship was virtually impossible unless they were truly saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of them were involved in creating idols and making a profit from it. Read the book of Acts. So once they were saved, if you do away with your job and business, how are you going to have income? Not only were gods worship, false gods, but goddesses like Diana, whose influence was over entire cities like Ephesus, a temple to her, 1,000 temple prostitutes, men that would breathe fumes from the ground and get coherent, act like they're giving you a prophetic oracle from God. Notice it, gods and goddesses. Now, folks, I know we don't see it here, but in parts of Europe, and parts of the world, the God and the goddess worship is starting to have a major revival like we have never seen before. And some of this is due to the fact that some of the movies which are coming out. So going back to the book of Daniel, I want to, I want to just point out a couple things to you from those verses. Number one, the Antichrist does not honor the God of his father. The God of a Jewish father would be Yahweh. And there is no other God besides Yahweh according to scripture because he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But one thing that was interesting, he says, and neither the desire of woman. Of woman. And I think Bill and I looked at that one time and it, 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 it said it a little bit differently. It said something about no desire for the God of the women, the, the God that the women were worshiping. The verse that says this, he will honor a strange God, that word in Hebrew means foreign, alien, or a God not seen before. A brand new God. A God that's a new God on the scene or a new God on the, st on the stage. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. This is all talking about the Antichrist at the time the false prophet joins him. He will exalt himself above all that's called God or that's worship. Revelation 13, verse 4, the Antichrist, it says, they worship the dragon who gave power and, and, they, and they worship the beast. The beast is the symbol for the Antichrist. Revelation 16, 2, they, meaning the world population, worship the image of the beast. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Whoever does not worship the image of the beast is killed. In fact, you're killed, according to Revelation 20, by beheading. 
And there's one religion in the world that beheads people. Talk to me, somebody right here. Okay. The battle in the beginning and the first murder in the Bible was over a religious offering. Cain killed his brother Abel because God favored his offering versus Cain's offering. And can I tell you, most wars that are caused in the world today are not just ethnic wars, tribal wars, property wars. You go study history when the Hindus are killing Muslims and Muslims are killing Hindus and, Jew, and, 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 and people are killing Jews and, and uh, religions are killing Christians and persecutions breaking out. Most of the world's problems as it relates to war, I'm telling you the truth, is over religious battles. Oh, God, God, help me get this across, please. And so in the time of the tribulation, the Antichrist forms a religion centered around him. But in order to receive worship, the icon is created by them. Now, them have a period of time to do it, but it appears that when it's created... Certain parts of this is already prepared and already made, and then they initiate this, and you have this icon who is speaking and living. When it comes to the word image of the beast, John could have used three Greek words. One word means to cut a stamp out or an image on the hand or on a piece of wood. Another, the Greek word haragma means a mark, a stamp, or an act to engrave, in, to engrave to some kind of engraving art. He's instead, by inspiration of God, uses the word icon. It's spelt in Greek E-I-K-O-N. The E-I is pronounced I. Icon, which is a statue of another person, a statue of, it can be the statue of a departed person, whatever the case may be. But this icon is interesting because listen to the verses. Now folks, notice the word worship. This, this is very important you understand this. Revelation chapter 13 verse 4, they worship the beast. Revelation 13 8, and they cause them that dwell on the earth to worship him. Revelation 13 12, he calls the earth and them that dwell there to worship the beast. And if any man shall worship the beast, Revelation 14 19, they shall have no rest to worship the beast, Revelation 14 11. They, they were, they were uh, ruled with Christ who did not worship the beast revelation chapter 20 verse 4 this entire system of revelation 13 centers on a man who is a false prophet telling some group of people on the earth to make an image of the beast and then there's a, an authority given and in one place it says he gives power to the image but in the old fourth fifth century text it says she gives power to to the image. I would have never in my entire lifetime thought about or saw or, or, have, or viewed or seen or imagined what I'm about to tell you. Intelligence and the ability to create intelligence used to multiply every five years. Then it went to four. Then it went to three. Then it went to two, then it went to one, then it went to six months, three months. And listen, now intelligence and technology is multiplying every so many weeks to months. AI is a word that many of you have heard. How many of you have heard the acronym AI? Artificial intelligence. Machines, computers, and robots can now simulate the intelligence of a human being. Robots are becoming humanoids. They act, feel, talk, and have human informations. They are now working, and I, I personally think some of this is already developed. The military's got stuff that huh, we get it 10 years later, you know. It's just, no, it's really true. They, they've got stuff, Israel's got stuff. Israel's got stuff to freak you out and blow your mind. And, uh, you know, it's still under the wraps. But let me say this. They will one day be able, when you walk into an airport, to do a scan of your brain and know what you're thinking. They will be able, now I'm telling you, they're working on this now. They've got it to a limited level, but people said, 
Well, it ain't going to happen. Well, they said they weren't going to land on the moon either, and they did. And they said they weren't going to get to the edge of outer space, and they did. See, some of you don't keep up with this, so you have no clue what's really going on. You'll be able to walk through an airport, and they're going to do it all under the name of security and anti-terrorism, and they will have a scan of your brain with images. They can already produce foggy-looking images from people's brains. If you have an ungodly leader who's anti-Christian, a dictator, who determines that those churches are dangerous to the culture, they're already determining in some states that the Bible is dangerous, which makes all of us dangerous. We've just concluded one of the greatest prophetic summits that I've ever been blessed to be a part of. 11 services with five different speakers. We're making available the CDs and DVDs of that great prophetic summit. I don't have time to explain to you the details of each message, but let me give you the titles. I preached on God's determinate counsel, how God intervenes with angels during political seasons. This is very significant, especially considering the recent election. Friday night, I preached on the amazing 70-year cycle and Israel's fullness. Not only do I give you five reasons Israel will continue to endure despite her enemies, but I will dig deep into the number 70 and reveal to you that 70 is the sum of all prophetic numbers. This is a significant year and you need to know why. On Saturday night, I preached on artificial intelligence and the image of the beast. Revelation 13 has puzzled people for years that they shall make an image of the beast and make it speak and live. I believe I found a link to AI, artificial intelligence, and how it's going to be used to create the image of Revelation 13, 14. And I preached on deep state rising, the shadow people controlling the system. I actually shared with people items that are in people's homes and offices that can be hacked into and listened into with their conversations and even by people viewing what they're doing. But I also share three powerful stories, some of them that have not been made public, that talk about the deep state and why they want to control transportation, banking, food, and practically every aspect of your life. Now here's some of the messages by the other speakers. Profound developments in Arabia, God's calendar, do you know what time it is? Understanding the key of David, the procession of the Messiah, the coming fullness of the Gentiles, the scarlet harlot. You need to get the CDs or the DVDs. To order CDs, which are the message only, it's 18 PS CD for $75 or more. The DVDs are 18 PS DVD, that's the offer number, for $110 or more. Now, these are the unedited versions. Let me tell you what I did. I decided not to edit any of these. You see the edited parts on TV. We edit the programs heavily on television, but you're going to get the total, complete, unedited version of the CD and the DVD. one 888 bread or contact me at the address on the screen and send that donation for CDs of $75, DVDs of $110 or more, and help us keep manifest on the air. And don't forget the offer number and let us know what you want to receive. It will be a blessing to you. And don't forget the DVDs have the pictures that the speakers use, which are absolutely phenomenal and incredible. We hope to hear from you soon. You know, just thinking about some of the things that are on the uh, DVDs at the Prophetic Summit, one of the things I showed was a, uh, something that a pastor found that was hidden in his office that had been placed there by someone in a high up position trying to monitor him and listen to his conversations. And I exposed that on the, on the message, Deep State Rising, and I will show you the device that was actually found. Anyway, there's so much in these teachings. Please get the CDs or the DVDs if you can and listen to these powerful 11 services. Uh, we're gonna be coming to some great places. One more time, listen carefully. You that live in Florida, why Mama Florida, Monday night, June the 11th, one service only at the Church of God State Camp Meeting, and then we're coming to Simpsonville, South Carolina, to the Church of God Campground there for the State Camp Meeting, and uh, that'll be uh, Wednesday, June the 13th through Thursday the 14th, and then we're going to be coming to Redemption Christian Tabernacle, uh, uh, which will be on June the 15th through the 17th, and that's in Tip City, Ohio, and I want you to do this because it's, it's absolutely impossible for me to take the time to tell you everywhere that we're going to be. But some of the great places that we're coming to, we're gonna be coming to some places for the first time in the fall, Middletown, Ohio, for example, coming back to Arkansas, perrystone.org itinerary. 
Look it up right now and go and check it out. Also, I've not said anything about this, but I'm like super thrilled at something that has just happened, and that is that we launched the ISO International School of the Word Bible School, and uh, it literally, I think we have over uh, 1,200 students now. It's just growing continually. In the past, that's just three months. And uh, you, can, you can actually go online, Demonology 101, Secrets of Hebrew Prayer, uh, just so many things. I want to take the time to talk about it, but go to ISO.org right now, anywhere in the world, and look at the research center that we have developed for the Word of God. And so uh, we're, we're, we're so thrilled about that. And you know, one of the things, I tell you what happened to me, I was walking through my office and uh, actually, I have several offices, and I started noticing cabinets and boxes with nothing but sermon notes, sermon notes, tens of thousands of notes I had made. And I thought to myself, what's going to happen to, to all of this research, 170,000 hours of prayer, study, and research uh, when I'm gone, or if the Lord should, you know, should take me before the rapture? And uh, the thought came to me, it's going to be wasted. I mean, you know, my kids aren't going to know what those notes are. I know what they are. And so we, we really started praying, and Dr. Brian Cutshaw uh, came into our life. He's a friend that goes way back. I introduced him and his wife years ago at a meeting in Daisy, Tennessee. And we felt led to pull our, all of these resources together, the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that God had given us over the years, and put it together on the Internet. And so that's what ISO.org is all about. It's that in-depth academic level revelation of God that you can have. And so I'm thankful for that, and I want you to pray for that. Uh, that it will reach the nations of the world. Uh, I was recently told, and I'm not going to name the country, that uh, there was a, a country that had taken a lot of our material over the years, over f 15 years almost now, and they had translated it, the, the, some of the books and some of the teachings, and literally, literally hundreds of thousands of people's lives in this one nation that has millions and millions of people uh, had been affected by that. And so I'm only one person, and I can only be one place at one time, but Manifest can go into the nations of the world. And we're so grateful for especially the Christian television networks that, that keep Manifest on the air and help us to have a time slot to be able to do that. So for all of you who watch the Manifest program, why don't you just jot a note sometime to us and let us know you're watching and stand with us to keep it on the air, but also let your local Christian station send them an email or a letter and tell them that you enjoy the Manifest telecast on their network because this helps them to be encouraged to keep the Manifest telecast on the air. Well, I'm excited about this year. I'm excited about what God's going to do. And uh, if you'll follow me on Facebook Live, I'm going to be showing you some things in the weeks ahead that are very exciting that God is doing in the ministry that you can be a part of. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for standing with us with Manifest. See you next week. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2018 Israel tour. The dates are November 19th through the 28th with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.